I watched the scene mm-hmm. for uh, quote unquote research purposes. Understandable. Yep. I'd be mad if you didn't. You'd be mad if I did. <laughs> no, Let I'd me be... play that back because Vlad in this space is a pillar in this space. You heard Adam when he broke up the whole No Jumper podcast, how he basically said, I want to emulate a Vlad model. I want to emulate a Say Cheese model. These are the two guys he looks up to because they're making the most money. He wants to make more money than his wife getting plug talked out on that plug talk couch. So he wants to compete with the best. So let's flash back to this little quick intro. And Vlad, you know, Vlad is telling him, he's like, all right, cut. All right, you ready? All right, we're about to talk about the Jason love scene. Look how this man is like getting ready for this clipped segment. Watch how he prepares for this Jason love segment. I watched the scene. Ooh, I don't care who you are. As much as this man wants to say he loved letting his wife get plug talked out on that plug talk couch, he didn't. Look at this. Look at these nervous little ticks. He don't want to talk about this. This was not a good idea, fam. Your stock, you're like Greg Oden's niece. You are number one draft pick, and then you went to pretty much unplayable with this decision, Adam 22. But there was an ulterior motive, an ulterior purpose for letting his wife have her first black man. Well, no, not her first black man. Her first black man under Adam's watch. Let me tell you why. Indifferent if you didn't. But, right. Yeah. Is, it, is it weird sometimes knowing that like your friends have seen your scenes or at this point does it not matter? Nah, because it's like I do porn. Adam 22 said that so matter of factly that he thought he was Ron Jeremy or something. And I couldn't remember that guy's name, so I went onto the internet real quick, and I was just like, I typed in vintage old school porn name, because I knew the name would just pop up. He's a very, like, notable guy. His name was Ron Jeremy. It came to me before I could hunt him down on this site, but I guess this is a list of all the actors, like the movie stars for every single movie, like literally, like, every male porn star. And so when you go up here and we go to search, I don't want to hit the wrong thing. Please don't hit the wrong thing. Let's go to stars, boy. Let's go Adam 22. Yeah, Adam 22. I, I I don't see you on here, big guy. I don't see you on here for some reason. Why is that, big guy? You want to know why? It's because you don't do porn. You do a podcast and you manipulate women to then do porn. And not only that, but you have to use Lena in order to get the women to do the prawn. You get what I'm saying? You're not a Don. And this article, and the timing of this article coming out with, remember um, Eliza? You know, yeah, Selena's homegirl. Yeah, you saw that she sucked up the whole team and then went and sucked up the whole other team and then thought that you could get sucked up like they did, like she did to the whole team. You thought you could get that too. And so you basically like coerce this woman into doing the same thing. You owe this woman a gang of bread. You owe this woman a gang of bread, my boy. I just typed you in, sir. I I couldn't find you. So you are not an actor, sir. You are an actor and a puppet for the Aryan Brotherhood. That's about it. As far as you being a porn star, sir, no. So let's get into this article. Let's get into the the whole reason why you let your woman have a black man to begin with. It was to hide the public from this article here. Let's take a look. Wait, hold on. I don't know if y'all saw that, but when I scrolled down, I saw a vintage Adam 22 in this bitch. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I saw a vintage Adam 22. Let me know if y'all see him. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Like, look at how old these guys are. There he is. That boy Chuck Martin, a.k.a. Adam 22 in the flesh. No wonder he gets his style and swag from. The boy Chuck Martin, a.k.a. Adam 22, I found you, my dude. Born in 1964. You got to look up to this guy because this is Adam 22 with over 64,000 views. So Adam 22 actually did better numbers than this guy, a.k.a. Anthony Martin, Chuck Agazano, Chuck Chi, Tony Steele. His biography, Tony's a brilliant, beefy stud who's been floating around the prawn industry since the mid 80s 
He's shown his stuff in hundreds of erotic features over the past 15 years. Making a name for himself as a do-anything hunk who's often called f on for B-grade projects and group scenes. Actually, this is Adam 22. He ain't doing no A-list shit. Tony's thick set, good looks, and dazzlingly white smile have won in plenty of fans among females. Tony's a slick-talking smoothie, and we'll leave it there because I don't know, we're, we're borderline... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we going, he's got 80%. I see the ratio though. He got the 80% ratio. You feel me? But I believe, let me put up a side by side between Chuck Martin and Adam 22. Tell me this is not Adam oh 22. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, the internet is a portal and it is a black hole that once you go down, it can make connections that it, 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 they're literally impossible. I found this connection in five minutes. That's why the internet is a portal, a subdural heathal. Of information that is just like it's it cannot be explained this gotta be a family member or something some sort of conspiracy here because this is it's weird but let's like continue the for a lot of people to see it and sometimes it is weird to realize just who has seen it but no ultimately it's like they're they're supposed to see it right like even yesterday we did this live stream orgy thing and i'm you know thinking there's probably a lot larger percentage of no jumper fans who are watching it because we're live streaming it like and mm -hmm. I, I mean um if anything i was i was hyped on the idea that they're uh, getting to witness me having a good time on camera just like this we're having a good time on camera right in a different so, way it's a little less intense but yeah <laughs> a lot less intense okay yo big vlad you got a lot more money than me man you got a lot more views you got a lot more you know what i'm saying you got bigger fish to fry please don't copyright strike my video man this video is used under fair use guidelines and the FBI's criteria that they use under fair use. You can use fully copyrighted material and offer your own expertise, your own critiques, and it falls under the fair use guidelines. I just want to make that clear, DJ Vlizad. Now let's take a look at this article and correlate the time frames between the plug talk scene and Eliza Jane's Rolling Stone article that had a lot of intriguing and telling information in it. Let's take I a want look. to read the whole article to, to gain context. So let's jump this off. The coercion world of no jumpers, Adam 22. He exploited me from day one. The popular podcast host formed platformed hate figures and allegedly pressured women to have sex with him. Former staff and guests allege a culture of exploitation and coercion. Now, when we get guest interviews from no jumper staff, do you guys want to guess? Do you guys want to make a, a quick guess on who they got to talk? Yeah, of course. You know that nigga Lush was running his gosh darn mouth. That nigga Lush is a snitch, boy. He thinks that because he got a job back at No Jumper that he nice, but he's a snitch, bro. I don't know why Adam hired this fool back. He exploited the fuck out this dude in the Rolling Stone interview. You forgot about that, huh, Adam? Because, yeah, this got tucked under the rug. I'm telling you, this is the reason why he let his wife fuck a black man with a fucking 18-inch horse cock. It's because he wanted to distract from this. Listen to this. In August 2020, Instagram influencer Eliza Jane appeared on No Jumper, the massively popular podcast whose content bounces from hip hop to current events to more recently the odd appearance by alt right polemicists. During her episode, Jane discussed alleged sexual encounters with multiple members of the Phoenix Suns basketball team, and R&B singer Trey Songs held her in a hotel against her will and urinated on her. Songs denied all the allegations, but the comments went viral, causing Jane, she says, to lose her job and get kicked out of her parents' home. The hysteria from her appearance led No Jumpers founder and head Adam Grand Mason, known online by his handle Adam22, to give Jane her own show. But the joy of a new gig quickly turned disgusted. to disgust, Jane says, as Grand Mason allegedly sought her out to film a sex scene with then fiance Lena. The couple married last weekend, asking privately and then publicly on a November 21st live stream. She says that Grand Mason began to mistreat her on the platform after her repeated refusals. I noticed the second I didn't want to do the scene with him and Lena, he started trying to make me look horrible on the platform, Jane tells Rolling Stone. So I stopped going on after that. Jane wasn't alone, according to multiple women who appeared on the show and who tell Rolling Stone that they felt pressure to do sex scenes with Grand Mason and felt denigrated by him after denying his advances. 
Singer Erica E.T. Perry expressed that she felt taken advantage of after Grand Mason initially refused to take down a 2019 interview where she talked about her prior sex work even after she told him that that clip was taxing on her mental health. Over the past year, personal discord between members of No Jumper team has also made its way to its channel content. Former co-host Nicholas Himes, a.k.a. Lush One, I'm sorry if I butchered your last name, Chief, tells Rolling Stone that No Jumper maintained a contentious atmosphere where creating content was prioritized over the general well-being and sanity of the people that were on the platform. He claims that Grand Mason encouraged infighting by asking him to expose a co-worker and by promoting content featuring the team's infighting. Now, mind you, too, Lush had just gotten fired. Lush had just gotten fired by Adam. So this was a great time for Rolling Stone interviewers and investigators to go in and go at Lush because he's willing to do it because he had just got canned on camera. So they, they got investigative journalists that are doing the right thing. You feel me? They, they know what they're doing over there. All right. So he added that morale among black and Jewish employees cratered when Grand Mason, who formerly never waded into politics, began platforming hate figures like Richard Spencer and Nick Fuentes. In a lengthy response to Rolling Stone's inquiries, Grand Mason denied many of the allegations against him. The idea that I asked Eliza repeatedly to do porn is and made her feel uncomfortable is false. Graham Mason wrote in an email, I never put any pressure on Eliza to shoot with us at any time. I merely asked her to since she was talking about formally entering the adult industry at that time. Oh, was she, Adam? Or we don't we don't know that because she never said that on on on, on record. She just said that she went through her little hoe moments or whatever. But she never actually said that online online to the masses. So that could be that could be a lie. Not saying it is, but founded by writer George Potter and other journalists. So that's who founded No Jumper, George Potter. No Jumper began as a Tumblr blog in twenty nine in twenty eleven, focused primarily on indie hip hop artists. Grand Mason, basically a, ba- a mainstay of the BMX scene, financed the platform after having success with his on some shit BMX brand. So it basically goes on to say, No Jumper as a YouTube channel, he blunt branched off in twenty fifteen, began interviewing then burgeoning scene of so of so-called clown rap soundcloud rappers the no jumper podcasting distinguished itself into the hip-hop blog sphere by interviewing acts that many mainstream outlets were either unaware of or unwilling to cover including xxx tentacion little pump and Lil peep grand mason seamlessly shifted from the bmx scene to the rap world whereas irreverence crass sense of humor and willingness to ask controversial questions made him a go-to interview for rappers especially polarizing ones like XXX and 6 9 Despite two sexual assault allegations from women in Grand Mason's past, which Grand Mason has denied, No Jumper has expanded from a single show to a burgeoning empire with a series of podcasts and live streams featuring hosts recruited by Grand Mason. Now, uh, No Jumper had 4.59 mil and 3 mil on Instagram. This is when they were in their prime. Adam could literally kick back and not even have to do shit. He had house phone. I think this was after... Um, cam girl and all that but he could have literally kicked his feet up had all these people that could have just done interviews week to week done everything and it had could have had selena and eliza on her own pod house phone on his own pod sharp on his own pod t-rod on his own pod ad in his own pod this fool fucked up a bag he fucked up big time big time so i watched the scene so the scene was already announced mm-hmm. and it got released it was all over, like, all the, the free porn sites and everything else like that that I occasionally frolic in. And, <laughs> yeah, look at Adam all pissed off that his wife's sacrifice, the sacrificing of his wife to a black man for a porn scene was leaked onto free pornographic websites, and he couldn't make more of a bag off of his own wife. <laughs> okay, so the, the scene starts, you know, I, you know she had already done the announcement, which kind of, you know, ended up getting memed. <laughs> you know, the whole thing of her, like, sitting there kind of bent over, and then he kind of walked up behind her. Still to this day, that yeah, someone photoshopped crazy. it. There's, there's, there's now, like, people taking Jason Love's place and walking in and, you know, pretending to it's be... It's like them. a TikTok template now, so you can make one very, very easily. Oh, you easily. could actually... It's a TikTok yeah, it's template. like it's already there for wow. you. You just okay. have to film behind it, yeah. Watching the video, the one thing that really shocked me a little bit was the cream pie. Hmm. As someone who's watched porn most of his life, uh, clearly 
that's not the usual way a porn scene goes. Usually there's a cum shot, mm -hmm. right? And I would think in this particular situation, she's married, she has a kid, there would be a pullout. Right. But instead, there was a cream pie. Going into the scene, did you and her have a conversation about that part? No. That was a little bit of a surprise. So you were surprised? I was surprised. Um, you know, sometimes things happen on the porn set that are out of the performer's control. And um, it was just decided that day that there wasn't going to be the usual pop shot and that they had to uh, they had to complete the scene in that way. Okay. Were you a little upset? I was a little bit surprised, for sure. But, you know, once, once I uh, wrapped my head around it, no, I wasn't too upset. It's like, if anything, the average porn scene that I watch has a lot of stuff going on that her scene didn't have. There's a lot of, there's a lot of asshole licking. There's a lot of, you know, like grabbing them by the back of the head and aggressively fucking the back of their throat. There's a lot of different things that sometimes happen in different porn scenes. So, you know, a little bit of a cream pie didn't really bother me too much. <laughs> a little bit of a cream pie. Okay. I, you know, I don't know how much it was, but. <laughs> well, you had mentioned, uh, I think one of your tweets or one of your interviews that if she got pregnant, you would raise the baby as your own. Yeah, that was me memeing it. Uh, basically, like the thing that we didn't expect that took place as a result of this whole thing was that it ended up being one of the biggest news stories in the country and I guess the world for the better part of like a month and a half, which I really didn't expect. Like the other day, somebody uh, in the Reddit, they- Oh, Adam, let me stop you there, champ. And notice how this man breaks eye contact and looks down. Everything we need to analyze and focus on depends on the nuance in our thought process becoming very nuanced. Later in this video, you'll see another example of an eye contact break and looking down when important detailed information is being stated. This is a lie. Adam 22 did expect for this little escapade, this little charade to overshadow a certain article that this video is referring to. So it's no coincidence that he brings his eyes down and says, oh, I didn't expect this when you really did. And then when you go back to telling the truth, you look back up at Vlad. Pay attention to the body language, guys. It tells you the entire story. The body never lies. You know, a little bit of a cream pie didn't really bother me too much. <laughs> a little bit of a cream pie. Okay. I, I don't know how much it was. <laughs> they screenshotted um, the, the, the graph of my, like, Google search, Google trends results, right? And it, it, it only shows the last five years. But it's basically like Adam22 barely exists for the entirety of my career. And then I skyrocket into national prominence over the course of the last month or so and to the point where it reached 100 on the list of Google trends. So I went from like not really like kind of like a niche phenomenon, no jumper and me, to the point of us becoming like just the the talk of the town for a period of time. So that was a little shocking. Um, and I'm feeling it in real life as well. Like me and my girl went to the beach the other day and it was just it's a whole new world now. Like I'm really, just, I'm just getting recognized by so many more people that it was kind of astounding. I don't know like what percentage of those people end up necessarily uh, going to No Jumper and watching it or whatever, but it really just took us into a different stratosphere as a result of uh, this news cycle that has uh, surrounded this. Well. Oh, but as far as me raising yeah. the child, <laughs> I don't know how I got on that. <laughs> back, back to the topic. That was a joke. Yeah, I did a lot of memeing. Like, you know, I think she announced it on a Tuesday or I talked about it on the podcast on a Tuesday. And then I think we were at the farmer's market on the following Sunday. So maybe five days later or so. And I think I just realized like, you know what? I'm going to have fun with this. I'm going to like really, really lean into this and just have conversations publicly about it and let the world know how I really feel about it, which in that case was like, oh, I've seen it. I'm not horrified by this. I actually enjoyed watching it. 
And I think that was what really made it go crazy viral at a certain point was just the fact that I was willing to come out and talk about it and acknowledge that I didn't have a problem with it and everything. And it just kind of took on a life of its own where I I knew that it was going to be, you know, I knew we would talk about it on here. I knew academics would talk about it. I knew our Reddit would go crazy. I knew that it would be a thing in hip hop. Adam 22, just like you aren't a thing in hip hop, you are not a thing in the porn industry. Adam Grand Mason Schlong 22. I don't know what your I don't know what your porn moniker would be, but you are not a porn actor. You are not a porn star, my G. You're not. You're a podcaster that leverages podcasting and your notoriety for filming sex scenes. Like literally, that's what you do. You are not a porn star, sir. Everything that comes out of your mouth, though, on your Twitter, on your X page, other than you admitting to liking underage girls and whatever happened with that, is you can't keep porn out your mouth. But you are a podcaster who does porn on the side because of his notoriety of having a very, very reputable podcast and platform called No Jumper. Now, there's a couple things that I want to mention here. There's a couple things I want to key in on. And we're going to go back to the Rolling Stone article as well as in a minute here. But there were a couple contingencies that Adam22 gave to Lena that are no-nos during this porn scene. And I have a feeling, I think we need to review some of the no-nos that Lena the Plug and Jason Love actually checked off. They checked off a few boxes that Adam didn't want checked off. Yeah, let's get into it. Can you explain to me some of the unwritten rules or code of the porn game? Because you had shared some information that we won't talk about off camera the last time I saw you. Uh Some details about your video or Lena's video rather with Jason Love that we won't talk about. But there is a code, right? Like, and, and I think you said that Jason Love maybe broke the code a little. And you couldn't finish in her mouth. Correct. That's true? Yes. Okay. Well, I think she did one out of two. <laughs> you asked what? me. The kissing and the finishing the mouth. It was, yeah, I think we, we did good. I don't think we slipped up on that those uh, requests. I mean, towards the end, I, I don't know. You, you know? I don't know. I ain't watch it. You, oh, you don't watch your own videos? Nah. Nah? I, I was there, so you don't really, you know? <laughs> but you never wanted to see how you did performance-wise? I Like looking outside the box? Not hear from the fans. Uh, <laughs> well, let me tell you that because I watched it like a hundred <laughs> times for research purposes. For research. <laughs> I saw it, right? After like the hundred and ten time watching it, I noticed that towards the end, she, um, you came in her, right? She like fingered her pussy and licked your cum. Pause. Mm-hmm. And that's where it finished. Yeah. Isn't that the same as you finishing in her mouth? Technically, but you know, obviously... Things happen behind the scenes that, you know, help one to be able to do those things without uh, actually having to do it or whatever, you know? Yeah, I feel like that was a slip up, right? Because at the moment, like my boys, a lot of people saying, bro, they could act, but in the moment, we're still human. You have professionals, but it's still fucking... That was news to me because I didn't watch it. I'm making this off third hand, third party evidence and hearsay from very pertinent sources i mean right hand to god i wouldn't be able to make this video unless i saw at least a small portion of it so yes i saw 10 seconds of this it would be kind of hypocritical and stupid to make a video about something i did not see so yes right hand to god i saw 10 seconds of this interaction and it happened to be jason love on his back lena the plug is acting like she's at a trampoline park and you know the rest and i literally laughed it off not to say that it's not you know it's not shot quality footage but it just looks so forced and like so a little bit over the top and i was just like okay i'm I'm cutting this off like it happened i wanted to see that it happened i didn't watch anything else i didn't see any other see any other um positions or anything like that or the finale but what i want to transition from here is We know that Adam has already lied once. Let me show you that I'm not playing any games. I'll show you that he lied twice. You heard what Jason and this man said about the contingencies about where the 
white cream was going to go. Watch what Adam-22 tells Vlad. Did his nose get a little bit bigger? It should have, because he lied to Vlad, just like China Mac. But instead, there was a cream pie. Going into the scene, did you and her have a conversation about that part? No, that was a little bit of a surprise. So you were surprised? I was surprised. Um, I want to expand this part of the video because we're doubling back, right? I want Vlad to see this. I want Vlad to see that he lied in his interview faster than China Mac did. Looks like Adam lied at the 558 mark. Yeah, he lied at the 558 mark. And when I tell you, when ICU coins the phrase, you can tell a lie and pass a lie detector test, but the body will never lie. It's a subconscious thought. Watch this. He lies three times in a row. And if you slow it down, you guys can pick up on this too. If you're going to do a podcast and you're going to be recorded the whole time, you have to have every single mannerism. You need to have every single uh, tick, every single blink, every single, you know, twitch under control, which you cannot do. It's physically impossible to do. So let me break this down and show you how he lied again. There's a come shot conversation about that part. No. Now, we just saw Jason Love say there was contingencies that Adam and Lena had planned out that no kissing and no coming on the face. Would that be the answer to the last question? Was there a pre-planning of how this was going to go? The answer is yes. So I want to show you guys the levels to this shit and the reason why I'm not married <laughs> to this day. This is the reason why I'm not married is because I can see almost, not almost every lie, but, but a good majority of lies. All right, watch it. He, he's about to answer the question. Look, watch, look at him. He squints. That was a little bit of a surprise. So you were surprised. I was surprised. Did you see that? Did you see, do you see what he does? Like when he answers the question, he can't, he's not looking at Vlad in the eyes. He's squinting and then he gives a yes nod, but his eyes break contact. All right. And then he, that's lie number two. You know, sometimes things happen on the porn set that are out of the performer's control. And, um, it was just decided that day that. Boom. It was decided that day. And then he looks back at Vlad. But when he's coming up with a story, his eyes are darted off to the side. Now, that darting off to the side, that is harder to tell that it's a lie because you could be, if you look up into the right or up into the left, that could be thinking of thoughts that are in the re retained thought that is in, in your brain that you're trying to search for. But the direct question and answer that right there is it's a little bit more cut and dry uh but but him not being able to make eye contact with lad when he's searching for this answer to further follow up with why he's saying that it was on the fly you sure it was on the fly but the initial question was did you tell her where his cum could go and the answer is yes and I just showed you three lies on top of the other lies that you saw in this video and the other lies that you're about to see at the end of this video. And that's all this fucker does is lie and is trying to get a bag, is looking for the easiest and fastest way to make a buck. This guy has been manipulated and will do anything for a dollar, even sell out his wife. Looks like there were a couple boxes that wanted and needed to be checked off that were not checked off. I know Adam is not very pleased about that because the word on the streets is that she did not follow the protocol, Adam. But like I said, I'm not, like Jason said, he didn't watch it. I, I didn't watch it. So if you watched it, that's fine. You watched it, but he know he knows what's up. He knows what it does to the mind, body, and soul. So once he's done, he don't even watch it. Pay attention, y'all. I mean, nobody has ever explicitly told me that there's a code, but I definitely feel like there's an expectation that you keep it a little bit gangster in terms of the whole porn thing, because if you're on set, 
you're going to see a lot of weird shit. You know, you're going to see dudes having to jerk their dick off for 45 minutes to get hard. You're mm-hmm. going to see guys having to pop Viagra to get hard. You're going to see, you know, girls who have, or they're on their periods, so they have to go and like shove some fucking sponge thing in there and to clean out whatever kind of stuff might be in there. There's all kinds of shit. And like, I realized this because I, like, the one time I did a, a an anal threesome with Riley Reed and my girl back in the day mm-hmm. in our backyard, which is kind of hard to imagine now. We probably wouldn't do that these days since we have like a family and everything. But, you know, there was some, some leakage, some shit flying, you know? It's happened. And, you know, I had a turd on my knee at one point and stuff. And then I went on the podcast that week and I just talked about it. And my girl had to tell me, like, yo, like, I don't think girls are going to necessarily want to do anal threesomes with us if you're just going to be airing out the grossest things that happen. Once again, Adam22 and his obsession with Riley Reed, his infatuation and his biggest crush on Riley Reed, he goes back at it and does it again on Bootleg Kev's podcast and explains some explicit shit that he should have kept quiet just because he wanted to let everybody know again that he fucked Riley Reed. Man, this guy is obsessed with Riley Reed. Because I know how this fucker ticks. I know why he mentions not only that scene, but Riley Reed. He's had a crush on Riley Reed. He was so giddy when he had Riley Reed on his podcast, all excited. Come on, man. Come on, bro. We've all been with a shorty. I, w- I had to drop a shorty because she told me about her background. I was actually feeling her, and then she told me she did scenes. And, said, and she, we watched a few scenes, and then I just was like sorry sorry baby doll like uh like i can't I, you gotta go like, because we all we all do things in life and, and adam gotta understand that his stock just like greg on his knees he was like a number one draft pick he could have kicked his legs up had cam girl house phone t-rail ad all the game kelpie sharp interesting conversations he could have had up there and been a kingpin in his own right he threw it all away to be a one-man show to do way more work and to do prawn he thinks being doing this shit is like cool. It's not cool, buddy. It's not. And there's an unwritten rule that your boy Jason Love, he did it on purpose. That boy Jason Love, he splugged in your girl on purpose to spite you, sir. He was just like, I can't help it. This shit do good. And I'm just, I'm finna just, brat, brat, brat. and that's what he did. But it's a disrespect on his end to initially do that. He did it on purpose. Our responsibility to not talk about it. If a dude can't get hard, it's like, we're not going to clown him. We're just going to kind of ignore it. To me, also probably within the porn guy's code should be like, you don't like, you know, especially if a fucking well-known dude like me is going to let you fuck their wife on camera for porn content, you should probably not be critical of him in any way. Or you should probably be respectful. Yes. You heard that right. With Adam 22's logic in porn code, if a man gives up his wife, that man should not be critical of the husband and that has just given up his wife for you to fuck. <laughs> what? You and a few handful of people, a handful of cucks are the only ones that have done this, sir. Like, there's nobody out here that's doing this, my dude. And if they do, they're not letting the world know. You let the world know. Because you didn't want people to see this Rolling Stone article that we touched on earlier. You didn't want to see that Rolling Stone mention those allegations, mention the stuff with Eliza, that you, that you were predatory and hawked down Eliza. You barely just fucked Selena. And you guys had some sort of thing where uh, uh, Lena <clears throat> watched you and Selena fuck. Because she, she don't care. She don't care. So she watched you guys fuck. She watched you get your ass ate and you barely piped. You barely piped her because you were scared. You didn't want to pipe her all the way down. That's what Selena was saying, that you barely piped her down because Lena was in the fucking room. She owns you, bro. She owns you. You had to go do poker while Lena was just jumping on that thing, bro. Jumping on it, my nigga. That's crazy. Like, yeah, of course he's going to clown you. You gave up your wife, the one that you put a ring on. Your woman, she gave you an ultimatum and said, I'm fucking other guys now or I'm out fuck this shit but she waited to get the ring because if you said no then she's gonna take half of no jumper you'll own no she'll own jumper because that's what she was doing on jason loves hog i feel like he 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 got a lot of hate for maybe not beating it up right and that i i guess he probably had never dealt with that before so he was probably trying to compensate for that by clarifying and like on your end you're probably like thank you (laughs) 
I mean, <laughs> thanks for not like. Yeah, right? you've seen like some of these fucking scenes this guy's in. He's fucking, you know. And I thought about that after, like, oh wow, like I kind of got off easy there because you know I didn't really think about what kind of sex they were going to be having beforehand, and the the scene that they did was very much like very personal opinion. Okay, which did oh you prefer? God. What do you prefer more, uh, the BBC or uh, Mister uh, Husband over here? Is this why you put us in two different rooms? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We can just be truthful here, guys. Truthful, okay? Um, I did enjoy uh, Jason's new. Everything not new is interesting and fun, but I uh, what? You made him leave. Look at that. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just trying to catch a breath. So wait, did you choose I, Jason I, over your husband? I had to with one person for seven years and although adam is very exciting to me socially, like a new experience is always going to be a little more interesting and different and adam could attest to that like a lot of the sure. we have are probably a lot Chat. more fun than him just seeing me on a regular night right yeah, yeah, yeah so i had fun with jason but i still have a lot of fun with my partner and i don't prefer jason's over adam. okay adam we're gonna start with the good shout out to lena your wife because she is being 100% truthful here. In another podcast she did with that woman, she was not truthful because I think that it started to affect y'all relationship. Notice how she says, I still love having fun with my partner. She can't say my husband because he doesn't treat her like a wife, nor does he act like a husband, nor does she see him as a husband. She's his partner, partner in crime, her bestie. Look at the wedding photos, look at the wedding videos. When he got down on one knee, when he's doing the soft shit, she's like, aww. Yeah, he's cuckified. And there's no turning back from this. I don't know how long it's going to last. But when she goes to Turks and Caicos, when Adam has the kids, you really think she's being faithful? Nah. Nah. Adam's search for random scratch has made it to where she can go out and do whatever she wants and not feel guilty about it. The sanctity of marriage should stay wholesome. The sanctity of marriage should stay true to one person. Or this will be the result. But men, I want you guys to look at Adam 22. He has crushed. Watch how this answer defeats him. Look how this answer is crushing to this man's soul about what he let happen to his wife. His wife just said that she liked the BBC better than her man's dick because he's getting a little bit lazy, a little bit comfortable. And the cuck movement is not happening. So everything was fine until she says, although Adam is a very exciting partner, <laughs> Jason came with that heat and was just a tad bit better and edged him out. Because Adam fucks his wife. Jason made love to his wife. That's the difference. Talk about the situation with your adult career slash my adult career. Also, we haven't had sex in two months. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I haven't had sex in two months. We're also not getting STD tested right now. We're just getting COVID tested. That is a good point. Um, I feel a little nervous to have sex with you. I feel like it's the first time. I just feel like, what if something tears open or something goes crazy down there? I, I didn't know. deliver vaginally. I know, but still, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been down there in so long. Is that why you haven't had tried to have sex with me? I just haven't even, hasn't even crossed my mind. We've only been able to for a couple of days. There was a few times where you and I were like really trying to fuck and then, but we couldn't because I wasn't cleared yet. And then now that I've been cleared, it's like, it's like almost like it was hotter because we couldn't do it. This is why it's very important, very, very important to scrutinize everything that your man or woman says and really dive deep into body language, eye placement, tone, pitch, all of it matters. So when I start going down this rabbit hole of why Adam actually released his wife to the wolves, if you can tell by the way they talk about and engage in talking about sex, it reminds me of, y'all remember like you had that one girl where you just met to, 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 to fuck, I guess, but you didn't have any like connection with? That's how they're talking about sexual encounters. You feel me? It's like, it's very like high schoolish, I guess you could say, or college-ish in the manner of how they talk about it, which is still cool. It's cool to have that playful banter, right? But 
watch how watch Atlanta the plug right here. Watch this. Okay, so I'll go through. Uh, she makes eye contact. She's talking to. The, she looks at the camera once or twice. Okay, she looks at it once or twice, and then she look look when she's talking to her man. She keeps eye contact on him the entire time. Do you want to know when she breaks eye contact? Yeah, listen to this. I haven't had sex in two months. We're also not getting STD tested right now. When you cannot maintain, this is when you maintain eye contact. But what happens when she doesn't maintain eye contact? What is she actually talking about? It's in the subconscious, guys. Doesn't say I haven't had sex in two months. We're also. Why does she feel the need to break eye contact? Now well, this is a totally different part of the video, but she says I haven't had sex in two months, while Adam says. Also, we haven't had sex in two months. That's the normal phrase because they are the couple, right? So if it's, I haven't had sex in two months, what are you, are you, is she fucking girls on the side and consider it sex? You better be careful, Adam, because this is the type of woman that sees another sexual encounter with a woman and it's very powerful. That's why she says, I haven't had sex in two months. You need to pay attention, brother. And this especially, brother. Yeah, that's what it's She can't keep eye contact with you, chief. And then you guys are worried about getting, I know, I know that like you guys are in the industry and stuff like that, but if you haven't had sex in two months, why are you waiting to get an STD test before you guys have sex again? That is a red flag. Listen to this. I haven't had sex in two months. We're also not getting STD tested right now. We're just getting COVID tested. So what the fuck? What does that have to do with anything? That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, How is that a good point, Adam? The fact that your girl won't fuck you till y'all get STD tests, right? Which means she's had other partners and doesn't want to slip up and give you something. Or the worser one of them all is she doesn't trust that you've been loyal and will not fuck you until you've had an STD test. And she's blaming it on both of you guys need to get tested. This is crazy. This is not a foundation of trust. This is all bad. So, oh, we haven't got STD tests. Oh, so she's been with somebody. Doesn't want to give it to you because that'd be a dead giveaway. So she wants to get tested first before y'all fuck. You better wake up, brother. You better wake up, man. This is why I'm telling you, you don't want to be skeptical of your woman, but you need to look at these things and they need to be major red flags. I saw this right away and I'm like, what, huh? Or how about you just don't give your wife out to the general public and she won't be able to experience no other dicks, guys. But he had to do it. His media persona, his credibility was on the line. There's a difference between making love and fucking. And yeah, Adam's getting that realization that you need to learn the difference between the two. There's a huge difference between the two. Men, y'all know the difference between the two. Women do too. They feel it too. When there's no connection there, Jason fucked his wife with a connection. But like I said, you were jousting. You were barely on the horse. And you giving your wife away... And then publicly showing everyone. Yeah, that is what saved your ass in the media. This is the face you make when you choose money, greed, and the root of evil over your well-being, your livelihood, treating people with respect, honor, and dignity. This is the ultimate cuck face of a man who's broken inside. Um, it wasn't hard to come back to your dick. I was in a lot of pain for a few days. Mm -hmm. So having sex was, you know, it was reupholstered. You're, you were a little traumatized by me being like, ouch, a, 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 an easy entry point for me in the sense that it was not yeah. some Brian Gosling hot shot, hot shot hookups or whatever the fuck that, is. Some, that is. Yeah. It's just like the most aggressive type of porn, obviously. So yeah, I mean, I guess he, he did kind of do me a favor in that that's, regard. That's my job to make money. Right. Mm -hmm. And if I don't make money. I'm going to take a job that's going to pay me well. Do you think that you fucked her better than Adam did? Well, obviously, yes. <laughs> that face, that's a face like, the motherfucker. Like that motherfucker made love to my motherfucking wife. He made love to your wife. Well, that's even fucking worse. That's what I'm saying, guys. It's all ass backwards. This whole porn shit is ass backwards. The fact that Jason made love to your wife irks him the most. The fact that Lennon didn't switch it up and make him do something different or cut or something like that. And the fact that side of her nigga, that right there is that's on both of them. Honestly, that's on both of them. And you can talk about we, we're going to go into if you want, we'll go down this little rabbit hole. Jason Love said that he couldn't help it. 
And so what they had to do was they had to, he, it was unexpected. He blew inside of her and then basically they had to use some sort of cream and then they actually squirted it out. It was a fake cum shot, bro. And they had to actually had to make this cream, give this cream and he had to shoot this cream out. He had to just go. This is all alleged because this is, this is third party information now. So technically Adam Deuce Deuce, Jason Love gave wifey a double cum shot, a double because the first one was, oops, it was an accident. And the second one was for the cameras. So what happened to the first one? So there was two. I can count. There was one that was like, oh, shit. And then, okay, cut. And then the second one, we had to whip up a, a some whipped cream or a, some sort of concoction. I don't know what it was. Cool whip, whatever it was. And then they were like, all right, let's go again. So there was a double. It wasn't just a single. It was a double. Ouch. Because I'm getting it from Jason Love and the Jason Love interview. And from, you know, information that I'm, gain I'm gaining from that. I actually haven't seen the... The, the finale or seeing the the ending or whatever like that so i'm i'm cool on that i'll take i'll take jason's word for it but i put this right hand to god i have not seen the ending i'm not going to watch the ending because it's it's detrimental to society it's detrimental to my neurons my dopamine receptors everything I'm not gonna do it that's crazy that's a super violation He's violated. Look at this man. He uncomfortable. Every time he has to talk about this shit, it is uncomfortable. He wanted to pump his chest and flip the narrative like he wanted this to happen. But he did it to cover the Rolling Stones article. And he even ratted on, on himself. He came into work after the Lena scene, after all that. And he's like, man, he's, he mentions it. This is what made me actually go back and start to do the due diligence. Is he came in, he was like, man, the Rolling Stone article came out and it nobody even really talked about it. It was a it blew over. Nobody even talked about it. And he was pissed off because he thought this article was generate a bunch of buzz and get him caught up. That's why he released his wife to the wolves and it didn't do shit. But we're touching on it now, Adam, because I have the time today. Just got done with a workout. I got time today, though. Because I'm going to keep it G real. I don't fuck with you because you disrespecting me. You disrespect my hood by telling me take off my flag, asking how gangster I was, nigga. You lucky on that day I was acting cool because I told you I ain't got time for that. But, nigga, today I got time because. It don't matter. Just Is he going to come on the podcast? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I heard he like flew to Toronto to do six buzz. So who knows what they're going to ask him? Probably oh, he's just, he's just, he's, he's, he, he probably, this probably raised his profile to like a, I mean, he was already a pretty popular guy, I'm sure. Yeah, but the weird thing in porn is like you could be really popular in porn and then you're still kind of like a regular person to most people. Right. You Especially know? if you're a dude. Yeah. Oh, especially if you're a dude. And, and even like, you know. Or you could be like Adam 22 and a nobody in porn in a podcast. Text conversation when I was in Florence about to get married is because his cousin came on one of the No Jumper panels. And then AD did a whole stream talking about, you know, if, if I'm not fucking with Adam, then you or if you're my cousin, you shouldn't go on No Jumper or whatever. And I hit him up. I sent him like you know a couple of texts, just being like, "Bro, I didn't know you had a problem with this fucking guy. Like, like, what do you like?" But again, it's like he needed some clickbait. He needed something to talk about that week. So you see how AD, even being who he is, he just is. I don't know. It's like weird. Like, oh, you, you could have just texted me and said like, "Why do you interview my cousin?" Instead, you do a three-hour live stream about it. And you know, that, but that's why I kind of feel bad for these guys because. It's like they, they, they feel like they have to talk about me to get views and to get people to pay attention because that's all of their most viral content has just been talking well, about Well, I think me. Lush said that. I think Lush is like, this is what y'all want, so I'm going to keep doing it. Lush did a whole video swearing that he wasn't going to talk about me anymore and thanking me for the positive impact out on his career and everything. And then he interviews somebody else that I don't fuck with, and he said, like, hey... I really tried to stop talking about No Jumper. But this is what y'all want. But you guys don't watch my shit unless I talk about No Jumper, so I'm talking about No Jumper. Now, the difference between Lush talking about No Jumper and not talking about No Jumper is he'll get like a thousand views on an average stream. Oh, how quick the mighty have fallen. Right before this, right before this, he hadn't let his wife get piped. He had ADT rail and everybody in the building. He had Lush in the building, and now he's had AD&T rail leave. 
Lush started his own pod and he's talking about Lush. He's so down bad. And he let his wife get piped out twi- three times by three different people up until this point. And now No Jumper is down so bad that he hires Lush, this person that he's talking big shit about, the person that aired him out in the beginning of the Rolling Stones article and will air him out toward the end of this article. We'll get into that just here shortly. But he's so down bad for personnel that it's come to this, that he's hired the same people that he's talking shit about on this platform. This man is down bad. On your live stream. Have you guys chatted <laughs> at just, all? I mean, he tries to hit me up and stuff, and it's like, bro, I just don't you know, fuck with Adam this. Adam22, I asked him to post me. Has he posted me? No. Fuck you. Fuck Lena. Fuck No Jumper. You know, I made you guys, I made y'all fucking show popping for a good two and a half months. Every time I go on to No Jumper, I make that shit jump. I raise y'all numbers. Where's the love and support now that I'm down? Y'all posted Eliza to get her to 100K, right? No problem, right? No problem. For free, all y'all posted her when you guys wanted her to get to 100K, right? But me, I asked you guys for one fucking favor. I said, just post me on your page. Please, I mean, your story, please. They acted like they didn't read my text. They acting like they see me fucking wonder right now. I I see it. No pressure. No pressure. I'm not going to talk shit about y'all no more. No, no, no pressure. Girl on girl drama. She made her choice. She didn't want to post me. That's fine. Adam didn't want to post me. Lena didn't want to post me. Academics didn't want to post me. The guy I was fucking didn't want to post me. I only throw these Selena Powell clips in here to show you that Adam 22's allegiance is to Eliza. He's working his way. He's slithering, snaking his way over the top of Selena and right through to Eliza. Because Selena has built his platform all the way up. And now he can't do something small in return to help her build her platform back up. It shows me that he's got other motives. It shows me that he's got ulterior plans what was adam 22's plan let's find out the reunion the reunion episode she's back we just did the no jumper show together how you doing i'm very so happy talk to the vlog talk talk about what's going on i'm not walking over there yep yep you don't like it look at this what i keep telling you about calling me a bitch shut the fuck up nigga stop doing that i told you you respect the real man, please. I don't respect shit. Except- All right, I ain't, I ain't talking to you. <laughs> man, <it's> <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just breathed in his vape. His vape juice just no, went in my mouth. You You got trouble in these streets. <laughs> Where who? AD and the rest of his uh, alleged comrades. I've heard that AD is down with certain organizations like the Girls and Boys Club. Anyway, we just did no drama show. It's out. Boys and Girls Club. Hmm. Was that a slight shot that AD is part of the grid program? Did he just throw shot? Did he just say that he's part of the LA grid? Hmm. Because you know Adam is working with Joint Task Force and the feds, the FBI. So was that a subtle clue that ad is I, hey this is alleged i don't know what it, what was what did that mean boys and girls club that's a government program that's what i see that's what i'm thinking but i don't know i could be way out the loop but now you can go continue. watch it you can win an awesome shit prize pack if you uh drop a comment on that episode that's actually what we're doing i'm rocking the new awesome shit line right now but you can win it if you drop a what? comment on that no. You guys beef from Straight from yeah. what? We're I'm not to listen to people's picture. music. Oh, no. I would be so rude. I'm not talking <laughs> No, it's okay. <laughs> They're paying for that. They want that kind of exposure. I, right? They do. I mean, They're I've heard. So listen. Tell them. I love y'all. What? Tell them. No, we're broken about up. About how you fucking <laughs> finesse me. Bitch! If you want to hear the full story, you it's on the No, no Jumper Show. T- then say that, bitch. But I never told you. Book no hotel room. What the fuck? Post a screenshot. I got the screenshots right in my hands right now. Post a fucking screenshot. Post it. I'm giving you consent. But where Whoa. the fuck did I say? Wait, wait, no, wait. I'm leaving the phone. The they, you know they need to have your actual phone for that, right? Phone now? Yeah. Wait. No, no one without house phones hands. Thank you. Wait, give my teeth. Oh. <laughs> wait. Oh, 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 wait
<laughs> hey, this girl out here. Hey, Adam, it's a little disingenuous to put out a vlog and make little consent jokes with house phone when you are soon to out this man, but you're making consent jokes after everything you've been through, champ. <laughs> that's not a good look, buddy. That's, that's not very comical if you ask now, me. Ladies, this should be a lesson that if you're going to tell your stories, the host stories and stuff like that, just know men are going to see you a certain way. And additionally, if you're going to drink or try to be a functional drunk to where you're not out in a social setting, but you're still coming like to work drunk, you're coming in associating drunk, you're drunk. Men aren't necessarily going to outwardly try to make advances, but if someone knows you're drunk, people might think that you're in a vulnerable state. And they might do stuff that they might not normally do if you weren't drunk. Now, to me, you sound drunk. This might be you not drunk, but to me, you look drunk and sound, seem drunk. So I would be very careful. This is, a, this is just a lesson for ladies. Be very careful trying to be a functional drunk because it's not very safe in the grand scheme of things. And I wanted to present this vlog from Adam22 to show you the workplace environment. Everyone's trying to get with this shorty, man everyone and she's not necessarily throwing herself out there but when you tell your story and you've you've sucked up the whole team plus the practice squad then guys are going to be like holy shit well i could get that too so what adam as the kingpin he's going to leverage the business and lena the plug like he does with everyone else that he engages in uh, sex acts with to try to get this woman to film a scene with them so it says a lot that she won't get with Adam behind the scenes. She won't get with Adam with Lena's graces. And she won't get with Adam when Adam is basically throwing her the world, offering her own pod. She's he, He's already dissed Selena for Eliza because Eliza, he thinks, is the next jumping thing and the next person that he can smash and have work at the workplace. Like, that's the whole M.O. So let's get back to the article. Let's see what actually transpired. Let's see what they uncovered with their investigative journey. And wait, whoa, before we do that, Adam22, I'm looking at you right now like house phone, G. Because since this Rolling Stone article came out, and since the Jason Love scene, I haven't seen any female employees other than uh, Zan Princess, aka Man Princess. I think Man Princess is the only female that has worked for No Jumper or has been a reoccurring guest on No Jumper since, uh, since this debacle. And she's kind of a, oh, so it's like, she she wants to be on the scene. Any civilian that's not trying to get piped out, that's not already a porn star, is nowhere to be found. So if you didn't think there was correlation between the Rolling Stones article and Adam gifting his wife to a black man, this article came out right after with Jason Love saying that he performed better in bed and she was more satisfied with his physical attributes. Porn star Jason Love says he's 100% performed better in bed than Adam 22. That was a year ago. And then we go back here and then we see this Reddit post deleted by user one year ago that is discussing the Rolling Stones article. And it's basically saying that it the article didn't mean shit. And then this guy tags the social blade, pretty much showing that Adam pretty much is still on top because Adam blanketed this article by letting his wife take 12 inches. Let's get into so the journalists at Rolling Stone. They must some of them must have it out for Adam 22 or they want to have his shit shut down because these came out in sequential order dot dot dot. And this was the first one, which I don't think he's really too worried about because he is uh, a pillar for the Aryan Brotherhood. So it's no it's no surprise on if you go up and work for No Jumper, you know, he, you are working at a plantation. That's how he sees it. That's how you should see it. And just know that as such. But. He's not worried about losing a black interview or a black employee. So this was the first article that came out. And it this isn't the one that they are that he's worried about. The one he was worried about, and we got another brother, another sellout willing to work for the white supremacist, the man working for the Aryan Brotherhood, AJ the Menace, willing to downplay a downplay an article. Just so he can get his ass on no jumper. Willing to take a bullet 
for a man that doesn't like us brothers in the first place. You sell out. See, this is why we have to frame our own narratives, guys. We cannot believe the mainstream media because it's a conglomerate effort to deny the truth and the facts. That's all it is. And this guy's built a, a podcasting network, so he doesn't want to go to war with Adam, Adam 22. So he'll get paid off or he'll get some brownie points to help Adam and downplay this article. How convenient, chief. Long as hell. And then they got statements from people too. So they got statements from Lush, T Rail, the Blackout Girls. That's foul. Can we uh, look at this article? Yeah. We got statements from, uh, yeah, those people. Black we'll take a look at it right now. I just want to reiterate, guys, there has been not one female employee that has worked for No Jumper since this article has came out. So obviously, there's something going on. It's been Zan Princess, and she is a porn star that is loose. She don't give a fuck because she's already probably fucked Adam already. So it's no coincidence that no civilian woman has been up there or wants it to be anywhere near no jumper, period. They all know how it is. Oh, what we do? Fuck so Homeroom University is a podcast about podcasts. We're like ESPN for, for podcasting. So okay. every week we cover eight to ten podcasts, some of the biggest moments that's happened mm -hmm. between all their shows, right? Uh. Look, 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 look. It says right here, it says right here, point and shoot going to go crazy with this one. Uh, no, there's a comment that made a lot of sense, basically saying, yo, right here, pay attention. Adam wants to get rid of you, Sharp. I'm giving y'all to play right now. Adam used this man, AJ, to downplay his deviance and the article. AJ agreed, and this is his reward. I'm showing you guys the play. This is how important and real this article really was. No one has touched on this stuff about Eliza yet. No one has. Adam22, you owe Eliza a bag. The one where you was messing with the 16-year-old girl? The article said I'm going off. 19 when I met. So, but what did you say? I said that I spoke to her on the phone when she was 16. But you guys on my platform spread lies like that? Lies? Lies. Is it lies? I mean, did you talk to her when you were 16? 19. For like five minutes when I was 21. I'm 39. You wasn't 23? But you was 23, she was 16. Talking, you was on the phone with her for what? You should have known. Why am I talking to a 16 year old girl? Why am I talking to a 16 year old girl? Stop it, bro. You gotta get let out. You talk, you on the phone with a 16 year old girl, bro. What are you talking about? That it was a girl from 10, 12 years ago that I dated who just decided that I raped her like all these years later. Adam 22 from No Jumper is in hot water. Three of his co-hosts are dropping out of his show and it seems like his life is falling apart. And yeah, so when this buff, good skin having motherfucker Sloan puts out a video on you, this is not a good look. This is the demographic that Adam22 does not want to know about his deviance. This is the rich and famous crowd. The crowd that you do not want to interrupt because those are dollars. And if you lose these dollars, then Lena is going to have to keep the, the lights on. You know what I'm saying? And there's going to be a new Jason Love. It might be a baby alien next time. So if you don't want to have Lena paying everything and have her piping down baby alien, you do not want Sloan to get his hands on you, bro, because he will, will break you all the way down worse than he did Austin McBroom. As you can see here, look, one year ago, all the pieces on Adam-22 came out at the same time. Boom, 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 boom. And so he's got he's to say here as a sacrifice, you know, he's got to release his wife as a sacrifice to, to save his own career. So I don't think anyone's put this correlation together that to downplay all this stuff happening, this is when they make the decision for Lena to do the scene. So Lena was already trying to get some BBC. But this was a perfect time to unleash it because uh, Adam is a master at the manipulation of the media and how it works. If he didn't put anything out, this would have ended him. But he was able to meet it with force with letting his wife get plugged out at the same time. This is what nullified some of the kickback or else this guy would have been done. He was jousting and this was like him barely, he's barely hanging on the horse. He got hit with that long ass sword and he's just barely hanging on his horse, G. Because he was able to combat it by letting his wife go to the wolves. Like this is crazy. Okay, here we are. I made you guys wait, so I better give you some fucking information. Here it is. 
this is what Adam wanted to protect because not only is it going to ruin his reputation, but he owes Eliza a bag. Jane first visited the No Jumper studio located in Burbank, California with her friend Selena Powell, a frequent guest on the show. She said that Grand Mason invited her and Powell onto the platform a couple more times before giving them their own show, Thoughts Next Door. We would just get drunk and say crazy shit and the shows would always go viral, she says. So we thought she's already made a bag for these for these niggas, like a bag bag. Their shit was getting has got the most numbers, period. We only had a few episodes before they canceled it just because he was based on exposing rappers or athletes and he didn't like the backlash he was getting from it. Jane says in September 2020 controversy, and this was during the pandemic, so he was making dummy bread because everybody was at home. Thoughts next door, guest Slim Danger alleged that the NFL star Odell Beckham Jr. likes to get shitted on. Grand Mason likes to go viral, obviously, but then people were talking about how fucked up it was of him to platform us exposing people, Jane says. Despite the cancellation, Jane continued to be a reoccurring guest on No Jumper shows. She says Grand Mason eventually began asking her to shoot a porn scene with him and Lena the Plug on their Plug Talk show. Grand Mason explained the show's format on November 2021 No Jumper stream where Je Jane was a guest. Me and my girl, we sit on an orange couch, we interview a woman, and then at the end of the episode, once we're done interviewing her we hook up with her he says part of me was like i might want to do it but i don't know i just feel kind of uncomfortable because eliza's kind of like happy go lucky but she don't i don't think she ain't no porn star bro so she backed out and then he had me on the podcast right after i had backed out of the scene with him she says she was told that co-host blue jasmine was going to be the only one interviewing her but grand mason joined in and repeatedly pro propositioned her to shoot a scene he made the entire interview about trying to pressure me into this scene with him after I repeatedly said, no, 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 Jane recalls. It was really awkward. It was a whole hour of it. And I started to get really pissed off at that because I was like, bro, you just keep pressuring me. I said, no, get over it. I feel like he only wants to do scenes with the girls he hates. Uh, I can see why. I can see why. Yeah. He wants to have a one up on him. He wants to have that Riley Reed moment where he can just say, oh, yeah, I fucked Riley Reed. You know how he was in the, was in the bootleg Kev interview. You saw it. Y'all saw it. Think about how, like, four years ago we had a crazy awesome while we are on, on the floor of a kitchen in Miami. And now we're both, like, damn near married. Oh, yeah. And, and we're, we're, we're all children. parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> Yeah, Riley's, like, awkward. I really just wanted to be with Lena. And Adam's over here reminiscing. Molly on the floor, huh? Wow. She's like, bro, I'm way over that. I got a husband and shit that's like a, he's like a, a snowboarder or something like that. Professional snowboarder. He even got an, he got an interview on No Jumper. He's obsessed with Riley Reed. That's crazy. Right, so check this out. Any woman that is thinking about doing a pornographic film with Adam 22 and Lena, or even just Lena and Adam's like, hey, can I join? I'm going to show you. How this man is a male succubus and you should never do it. Don't even think about it. Let me show you some evidence. Okay, Take my final look. question to you is how did you like having sex with my boyfriend? I was really nervous. You were nervous. I was really nervous. After a couple seconds, I was like, oh, shit, it's real. Like, let, let me get into it. I think it was really sexy, too, that Adam was, like, making eye contact with you. And then you were oh, looking yeah. at me and him. And I was like, that's so hot. We do always look at each other. I feel like we're that's having, like, like you, a conversation with our brains. We're like, yeah, we're, we're, we're her together type relationship that's, yeah, that right really there cool. is a shorty that's polite basically saying like that nigga was trash and i was just trying to hook up with you girl but i did not want i did not want that sloppy motherfucker on top of that's me yo man <laughs> now take a look at this even more evidence to scrap any plans future plans of getting on no jumper by piping adam 22 the fraudster we just did the interview and now we're about to get into it you guys excited i'm very excited i'm, very excited. I'm excited nobody's more excited than me See your boner? I know. It ain't hard yet. Bring Fuck it over. That was fun. That was so great. You had a good time? Yeah, I'm having some goldfishes now. From some goldfishes. <laughs> Lena, you enjoyed it? Oh yeah, I had a lot of fun. She's reading a bill. I am reading. <laughs> That's adulting right there. I anyway, really I gotta head back to No Jumper, but thank you so much. You should come on No Jumper soon. I would love to. Once we're in the new office, yeah, we gotta get you in there. The other location? Yeah, we got a better location. It's going oh, up. Oh, that one was really big, too. The, your location right now? No, you, are you thinking we're still on Melrose? Enough no, with the no, chit-chat. I, I want to show you guys, because this whole video is dedicated to sex. I want to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. How Adam 
is a succubus, a male succubus. He will suck the soul out of you. Look at this woman's energy right here. You see that? You see that energy? All right. Now watch this energy. Look at the energy here. Thank you so much. You see what I'm talking about? No jumper. This man is the devil. He's the reincarnation of the devil. I don't want to go too far into another rabbit hole, but he is a male succubus and he will suck you dry. Pause. And in any way, shape or form, employees, his friends, his confidant, any partner he has, he will literally suck you dry. This is why it's very, very dangerous to do porn. It's not it's not a cool trade. It's nothing to flash. It's nothing to be happy about. Look at her. She's she's all the way drained the fuck out. Like that's that that to me is I mean, we all get there. You know, we we're all there sometimes in some way, but the the trade-off is like she's just like, "Man, that, that shit was not worth it, bro." You know, from that from this to that, like you know what I'm saying? You could just see it. You could tell like, "Nah, I'm cool on that, man. I'm cool like I'm cool." That's why it's very dangerous. I don't I don't consume pornography or anything like that period anymore. It's just it's too dangerous. I would rather try to get it orga organically. And for the longest time, like for the just the, the way that I am in life now, uh what makes it even crazier is the fact that I'm more I don't know, talkative in public. I'm very happy go lucky. I'm actually engaging, cracking jokes with random strangers. It has nothing to do with sex or porn, but I feel like what it does is zaps those neurons that you know give you that that light and so the like the times now that i've been totally clean off of that that's why i feel like i need to make this video to show you the dangers of this stuff Graham mesa called the idea i only want to shoot with girls i hate baseless adding i've shot hundreds of porn scenes over the past the last few years and i haven't had any complaints <laughs> that doesn't answer the question adam if you actually do scenes with women you despise so you can be looking them in the eyes while you fuck them and it's some sort of it's some sort of dominance thing you didn't answer the question which means you know the answer we all know the answer it's called logical deduction that's why i do scenes this is why <laughs> that's why i'm gonna do this video on this guy man because i can see right through him and that dude aj that little sellout coon that wanted to get on no jumper that did a deal with the devil says oh it was a hit piece they're tagging No Jumper podcast in the interview. So we can click this and we can see exactly what Adam was saying. No Jumper, we back in this. Uh, I had an idea, Blue Jasmine. What if we had her try out a little bit as a host? And, you know, once I thought that, I thought, who better for her to speak to than probably one of the most explosive people I've ever had on the podcast? Eliza. Yes. Oh, what's up, guys? I'm Blue Jasmine, and um, we're here with the one and only Eliza. You're here at the same time as me. What are you here for? Like, what Okay, as I'm replaying the video, I dive into even more nuance. Eliza, in the Rolling Stone article, says, Blue Jasmine, Adam told her that it was going to be Blue Jasmine only interviewing Eliza. And do you want to know something crazy about her intro and what she just said you're here at the same time as me adam tells blue jasmine it's just gonna be us two so he double lied he lied to blue jasmine and he lied to eliza to get them both in sitting in the same seats this man is a deviant and a devil and will manipulate any scenario to try to get his way but it doesn't work does it adam he can't tell the truth he lied to her and her clown shit do you know how epstein used galane maxwell to get over he got to the island this is the same dynamic adam is using a porn star is this woman a porn star to get eliza to do what he wants to be done and he's using a, a soft up girl super proud of like the train like watch the well okay but life. like i want to be like i suck a lot of dicks in a row but i've never really been like gang banged by more than two guys at once is that a gang bang or three something like dp no, I've never done Like, look at this. Adam, I just, I just, I'm just going to scroll to three parts in the video. You guys be the judge. We've already had one. That was, he just was asking about doing scenes. 
Watch, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do this together on the fly. Like, go out to the clubs, but I don't it's get true. close to anybody because I don't even let people in my house anymore. Like, it's fucked up. But yeah, Selena fucking like broke into my apartment when I but went home for Christmas last year. you just have to act broke. Year. You know, my mom's like, just yeah. tell them like, you know, I make enough to sustain. Like, That's what I do now, but <laughs> I mean, the people life. already know. Me. Oh yeah, Selena Powell did break into her apartment, y'all. She's a little scallywag. She broke in her spot. But yeah. I have to shoot this bitch. Oh my like, god. It. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna flip to one more. This is a hit piece. If we don't see Adam talking about sex, if he talks about trying to bag Eliza and fuck her, then we know this article is real. Y'all ready? This is number three. Ready? Money out, and yeah. then um, he was like right behind me, and um, yes, yeah, so I just I threw his money at him. I said, "Ew, I don't even want this," and I threw it at him because he was like acting like I was stealing his money, but he gave it to me. Wait, but he was doing it to be like a dick. You get it? Like I'm uh -huh. just supposed to hand you over my money here, take it. Right. So I took it, but yes, yeah, so this I was that. the other night. Yeah, it was last week. Mm. Yep. So I hate stuff Wait, like so that. Wait, so you're like, a dancer? Um, no, I'm a bartender. A bartender. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Important yeah. difference very important difference especially in new york like bartenders are like m more fully dressed and we're behind a bar so we can't like get touched by guys or anything like that you, and um but you just still have to get harassed by these fucking psychopaths um some i guess the people that come to the club without you bringing them but then you have guys that you're like talking to and you invite them out and those are the guys that like you know you kind of want to chill with and hang mm -hmm. out with interesting so yeah. eliza i would like to let you know that unlike yourself blue jasmine appears to be about the bag <laughs> Great. <laughs> I mean, I have a bag. I'm just not greedy. Yeah. Like, I, I'm content with, like, I don't want to be the richest bitch in the world. I'm now, as you can see, this Rolling Stone article is real, is valid. We did this game. We did this test. And we just flipped to a random part in this damn podcast. And he's coercing or using underlying tones and themes to pressure Eliza because... This woman, Blue Jasmine, in the bars, she's about her bag. And Blue Jasmine, I apologize. She's not a porn star, guys. Let's get that corrected. She's a bartender that keeps her clothes on and just gets her money legit, the legit way. Even even stripping's legit. Porn's legit. It's all legit, but I'm just saying, like, she's not a porn star. Let's make that clear. But the premise is the same. The Ghislaine, he's using her in the same way that Epstein used Ghislaine. But since Eliza doesn't want to do porn with you and Lena... She's not about the bag. That is called coercion, sir. The exact definition used in this Rolling Stone article. So AJ, the coon sellout for Adam 22's cock. You're saying this is a hit piece, right? Oh, yeah, you wanted to get on No Jumper and suck Adam's cock. You should have went on Plug Talk then. You sell out. But we have brothers out here wanting to get on and start a podcast. What'd you do for Juneteenth? Did you suck this man's cock? I bet you did, because this is not a good look, sir. This is definitely not a hit piece, and he's definitely coercing her for sex. How is this a hit piece when they tag the podcast where, and we go to three parts in a one-hour podcast, and it's all about him pressuring her to fuck him? It's that simple. I literally scrolled to a spot, and he's, he's basically coercing her for sex. Let's do one more for shits and giggles. So why are you moving annoying. around goofy why who's robbing you and how are you letting it's motherfuckers true, and that's why um, i don't my show my friends, lifestyle selena set me up to get robbed you feel me look 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 she has denied him before so this is human nature guys do you see how combative it is? he is do you see how like defensive and, and like kind of like standoffish he is because she has denied him she's denied him wow that's crazy to say this is a hit piece bruh Yo, AJ, it's not the menace anymore, brother. It's AJ the sellout. She's making money, but since Adam 22 and her aren't doing porn together, she's losing out on a bag. AJ, the sellout. Do you know what that's called? By definition, it's called coercion. Man, all these dudes is fucking sellouts. You even paid to get your video at the top of the list. That this is a conglomerate effort by Adam22 using the Google metrics because that, that weak-ass podcast, when you type in the Rolling Stones, coercion, Eliza, this YouTube video pops up first with like, what, a thousand views or something like that? Not even the actual article from Rolling Stone. The Rolling Stone article is a few down. 
Okay, so when you do that, when, when you see it pop up like that and it's the first in the search results, that means you've paid Google for it to list at the top of the results. So Adam has said, yeah, sure, I'll get you on No Jumper with Sharp. You're not sitting even sitting down with, no, with Adam, bro. You fucking coon. Fucking yes, man. You didn't even sit down with Adam. You sat down with his, his peons. Like, with the, with the triple BBL. Oh, damn, homie. Yeah, you peon. You sat down with a peon. The reason why this is at the top of the list is because he's paid for the Google advertising to put it at the top of the list. You fucking worker. You're not a boss. You're a worker. When I see shit like this, you are puppet getting puppeteered by the white man. Straight up. So listen to this. Jane says that Grand Mason and another co-host Sharp berated her after she denied Grand Mason the threesome on a March 22, uh, 2022 episode of the Sharp Tank. Sharp vociferously called her out for perceived promiscuity, also telling her, you ugly on the inside, bitch. Jane feels like Grand Mason influenced Sharp to take a harsher tone with her, but she says that No Jumper still capitalized off her, releasing three separate drops of t-shirts with her likeness related to her sexual encounters with pro basketball players. Jane asked to be compensated, but says she received only shirts and no money. Grand Mason admits to selling the shirts, but claims that Jane was supposed to get 50% of the profits, but she never invoiced us for the money. So what? How is she supposed to invoice you for the money, man, when you are itemizing the amount of sales you made and she has no idea what to invoice you for? This is not a hit piece, guys. You owe Eliza a bag. And listen, y'all, we're an hour in, so I'm going to chop it right here for part one. Please come back for part two because in part two, we will go down the other things that need to be mentioned like lush one just snitching his fucking ass off i mean lush one just sings like a fucking bird i cannot believe adam 22 rehired this man after he exposed the hell out of him eliza will be in contact because i have lawyers that will intervene and then you know what i'm saying you just get a cut to the lawyer and then you can get a quick bag i don't care if your money running low or you're balling we need to get you your bread that you are entitled to for your name and likeness being used on merchandise. And then Adam will need to open his books and show us the amount of money he made on your likeness. And you will have a check coming your way. If little Kelpie, yeah, if that boy can get a bag, oh yeah, you for sure can get a bag. So holla at your boy. It's I see you. And everything about us is blue collar and we gets it out the mud and Adam 22 is part of the Aryan Brotherhood. Y'all should already know what's up. So stay tuned.